I am Mrs. Comer, and I am the art teacher at Christenberry Elementary. Today, our art lesson is going to be geared toward um, more intermediate grades, fourth and fifth grade to be specific. We are going to be learning about artists who only make art from nature. And there are a lot of different ways to do that, so I think you'll find these artists to be pretty interesting. Also, we're going to be taking a look at what are some items outside our homes, what are some things in nature that we can use to make our own art today. We are going to be making self-portraits. Can you say self-portrait? Yes. Now, you may or may not already know this, but a self-portrait is a work of art that is about your self. So today, we're going to be only making art outside, outdoors, and we are going to be gathering things from nature to make art about ourselves. So I wanted to start today by actually talking about some different um, artists who make art only using elements of nature. The art that you're looking at right now is created by an artist named John Newth, and he is a contemporary artist from here in the United States in Minnesota. And I know if you're looking at these canvases pretty closely, you can tell that a lot of them have a lot of black and brown colors. Some of them are a little more colorful. But can you guess how he made these? You'll probably never guess, so I'll just tell you. He actually puts items on these canvases and he sets them out for over a long period of time. He lets flies eat the stuff that he puts on the canvases and then the flies actually leave their waste behind on the canvas, and this is what it looks like. He leaves it as it is, and that is the kind of art he makes. Pretty crazy stuff, huh? Here is another artist that makes art solely based from nature. This artist's name is Tokujin Yoshioka, and he is from Japan. So as you can see, this artist actually creates crystal art. And what I really like about his art is that he starts these crystals and he usually lets them grow over a period of six months while he plays orchestra music. I think this piece right here, he actually played music from Swan Lake to see how the crystal grew over time, like a lot of time. Six months is a long time. And let it listen to this music while it grew. So pretty interesting stuff here as well. Let's check out another one. Here is a female artist, and her name is Sylvain Meyer, and she is from France. She's an environmental artist, and she likes to use sticks, stones, and leaves, and she ends up turning these into these swirling shapes and patterns, always on forest floors, which I think is really, really creative. And a lot of, thing, a lot of times you'll see with these artists, um, their art is not permanent. Um, if it rains or if somebody walks through it, it's going to affect the way the art looks. So I think that's a really important thing to remember when you're making this nature-based art. This artist's name is Ren Ri, and he is from China. Ren Ri is actually a beekeeper and an artist. So he creates these acrylic glass boxes, as you can see, these clear boxes, and he lets bees create their own um, beeswax sculptures inside the boxes. So he likes to study what he calls bee psychology, and he lets them just kind of do their own thing, and in his eyes and in my eyes as well, these bees end up creating really interesting forms. All right, artists, if you're in the fourth and fifth grade, you really may have already heard of him. But this artist's name is Andy Goldsworthy. He is an artist from England, and I would say he's a very, very famous environmental artist. And what he did was he created temporary site-specific land art from only items in nature. So if you're looking at this picture right now, what did he use to make this art? Yes, he only used leaves, but he was really intentional with the kind of leaves he got. So this is kind of really what we're basing our art off today. We're going to be finding items like leaves or sticks or grass, clovers, flowers, anything in nature, even dirt, even mud, anything in nature that's outside our homes. Those are the kinds of things that we're going to be using today to make our self-portraits. So now that we're super familiar 
with artists who make art from nature, let's start getting familiar with what we're making art about ourselves. We need to start thinking about what kind of art do I want to make about myself to make a self portrait. So in a minute, you're going to see me go outside and start collecting some of the stuff that we need for our art. So again, things that we need for our art, things like sticks, leaves, dirt, mud, grass, clovers, flowers, rocks, anything that you find outside your home, you should use in your art today. Are you ready to go on a scavenger hunt? So let me show you what I found when I was just walking around my backyard looking for some things that I could use for my self-portrait. I grabbed um, a whole bunch of dried, recently cut up grass. Thought that could be really fun to use. I also grabbed lots of these little violet flowers that I found. I grabbed a few dandelions. I like to wear earrings, so I thought maybe I could use those for my earrings. Grabbed a lot of sticks, grabbed some straw, and while I was walking around, I even found some tree bark. So there's a lot here that I could be working with with my self-portrait. Now let's actually talk about, well, what am I going to be making? I know that I just mentioned I'm wearing earrings, so I think I might use my dandelions for earrings. Well, you don't actually have to do a picture of your face. That's just something that I'm gonna be doing today during our art lesson. If you wanted to, you could be taking things like sticks, leaves, and grass, and you could make um, a self-portrait that's not your face. You could make your whole body. You could make some of your favorite things that make you you. A self-portrait is not just a picture of your face. That just happens to be something that I'm doing today for our art. So what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm gonna just start arranging my nature pieces into my face, thinking about what do I look like, and then maybe we'll make some changes after I start. Wanna see? So here's what I came up with. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I started with an outline of my face. I just broke up some tree sticks that I had found and kind of made the outline oval shape of the outside of my face. And then I, from there, used some straw and I started to put some down as my hair, but it wasn't giving me the kind of texture and fullness that I was hoping for when I was laying it out as my hair. So what did I use next? Yes, the grass. I got a bunch of that dried up grass. I threw some in for my bangs and the sides of my hair. It kind of looks crazy, which is how I feel like my hair is looking these days anyway. And I really like the color that it added. So after that, I went to those dandelions. I put them in kind of where I think my earrings would be hanging. I did my eyes using sticks and violet flowers. I used the stems from the dandelions to be the nose. And then I used straw for eyebrows and tree bark for the lips. And then I was thinking, oh, I'm finished, right? But there's something that I ended up missing. I did not really think about, well, what do I look like? What are some special details about my face that make me look like me? I forgot my glasses. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to give myself glasses so that it's a better self-portrait. Are you ready? Much, much better. This actually has more of my likeness being that I wear my glasses pretty much all the time. So I know you're thinking, whoa, that is one crazy looking character and that is great. This should be a fun exercise where you can see um, what you can make out of nature to make a self-portrait look like yourself or to make a picture that um, represents who you are as a person. Now, what I'm going to do is actually take this apart I'm going to make a different self-portrait because remember, a lot of nature-based art is not permanent. It is temporary. That means that it only lasts for a little bit of time. So I'm going to disassemble everything that I made and I'm going to try to do something new. I think what I'm going to do is actually um, do a self-portrait of myself from a side view instead of them facing you straight on. So let's see what I can make this time. All right, artists, so here is what I ended up doing for my side view. As you can see, I just disassembled everything that I had the first go round. I still use sticks to create the outside shape of the side of my face and the outside of my face. I still use the straw and the grass for my hair. So a lot of the same things um, that I used were objects that were the same this time. It just happened to look different from a different perspective. So um, I worked really hard to try to be creative. I was actually feeling parts of my face as I was thinking about what shapes does my face make. You could look in a mirror if you are also making art about your face for the self-portrait project. There are lots of ways that you can tackle it. So I could have probably done that for hours and hours on end, just making different things out of sticks, leaves, grass, and flowers, and I hope you can too. Some other ideas when you're thinking about making a self-portrait, you could do your whole body. You could think about things that are some of your favorite interests and somehow represent those through nature as well. Or if you're not feeling the self-portrait theme for this lesson, you could still make nature-based art um, out of anything. You could do geometric and organic shapes and patterns like some of the artists that we learned about today. You could make art that stands up. You could make nature-based sculptures, three-dimensional art out of items in nature. There's so much that you can do just using items that nature gives us. I've had so much fun today making self-portrait nature-based art with you. I hope you learned something about these new artists that we talked about today, and I hope you've had a lot of fun creating art from nature. So I will see you next time we're doing art together. Bye!